Sorry, that was awkward. Oh, now I hear myself. Good morning. <laughs> Let's try that again. Welcome to First Christian Church of Lansing. Whether you're here in person or you're joining us online, we're so happy that you're choosing to spend your Sunday morning with us. Uh, a few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, if you have a prayer request, there's yellow cards in the back of your pews. You can fill those prayer cards out, and there's an offering plate that's in the main entrance there. Leave those prayer requests in there, and we collect those later on in the service to be addressed during prayer time. If you're joining us online, you can write your prayer requests in the comments of this feed, and we write those down for you so we can pray for those who aren't with us physically um, here in the building. Likewise, if you have an offering you'd like to make, you can put the um, offering in that plate that's by that main entrance, or if you're joining us online, you can head to our website, lansingdisciples.org, and there's a big donate button there. Uh, we do offer communion every single week um, by intention. That means that if you come forward, you can take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup. Or if you'd like an individual serving, if you remain seated, a deacon will come and serve you. If you need a gluten-free option, we do have those out on the Narthex too by the bulletins. And of course, if you're joining us at home, absolutely, you can partake in communion from the comfort of your couch or kitchen table, wherever you're watching from. First Christian Church is an uh, open and affirming congregation. We welcome all people, and we value you and want you here. So with that, please join us as a community in singing Come Thou Fount, I Will Sing, and the New Doxology. <clears throat> Street. 
it's a party. Uh, so before the scripture reading, there was a couple announcements we need to make verbally this morning. Um, first, I sent out an email this week, but I just wanted to remind people that tomorrow, Monday, November 20th, is the day we celebrate and remember as Transgender Day of Remembrance. Um, and if you're looking for something to do in the community, uh, the Salus Center, along with the Gender and Sexuality Campus Center at MSU, MSU Transaction, and a long list of other groups that I'm not going to bring out right now. Um, they are honoring transgender, gender non-conforming, and all people family taken from us due to anti-trans violence this year. Um, they're hosting it as a webinar online, or you can participate in person at the Life Sciences Building um, at 6.30. That's tomorrow evening. And it's my turn. So thank you everybody who grabbed a feather um, and helped with our Thanksgiving baskets. Um, hopefully everybody is gonna be able to get them delivered prior to Thanksgiving. Let um, me or my grandma know if you have any issues. Um, but as part of that, we have decided to um, do another missions. We met this week and after Oliver was here last week and he told us about the transitional housing and he had mentioned that there's a couple families that may need some help for Christmas, we decided to go ahead and sponsor one of those families as a congregation. So if you are able to and would like to help, we have made a little Christmas tree out in the narthex in the same spot that our Thanksgiving feathers go. Um, this is a family, again, they're living in the transitional housing. It is a mother and her four children. One is a newborn. Um, all of their, all each item is an ornament. So take what you can if you're able to. There's everything from socks to a sled. Um, and then when you do grab an ornament, make sure you sign your name next to the line that goes with that ornament. And we need all of the gifts back here by December 10th. We also are gonna be wrapping it on December, everything on December 17th. So if anyone would like to just donate wrapping paper or your time to help wrap, that would be wonderful after church on the 17th. If you have any questions, see me or my grandma and we can answer them for you. Thank you all for your loving and giving hearts. It means the world to our community. Thanks, Danielle. And I'll get yelled at by my kid later if I don't mention you're wrapping those presents on her birthday. Perfect. Bring them on Danielle's birthday. Wrap them on Alexis's birthday. What did I say? Sorry. It's because she started talking. She flooded my brain. Our first scripture this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows beautifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Because this never happens at this time in the church. They weren't prepared to speak when we were. <laughs> that's, that's right. You weren't prepared this week. so. Okay. All right. Now, we heard a little bit about seeds and planting and sowing and reaping and stuff like that. So I wanted to show you some things 
that have seeds in them. These are, this is an apple. Where do the seeds in an apple go? Yeah. In the inside, yeah. What about, this is a, what is this? Pepper. And where are the seeds in it? Can you see them? Well, in kind of in the top, in the middle. Right? You see them? Okay. How about in a tomato? Yeah. That's right. How about in a strawberry? It goes on the outside. On the outside. That's right. How about with an onion? On the inside. It's a trick question. No, there is no seed. It is a vegetable. Okay, so what do you, well, how does it grow then? <laughs> I think it grows from a vine. It, well, it, it, it is its own seed. Actually, right? And what about this thing? Do you know what this is? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Nope, it's an avocado seed. I can't, I can't see it. It's an avocado seed. And it's a really big seed in the middle of a really small plant. Everybody likes avocados, but they don't eat it? What about the orange? I don't have an orange. But if I could have one seed that I would plant, that I would hope would grow, it would be these seeds. Wouldn't it be cool if you could take one of these and put it in the ground and a whole tree would grow up? I would, I would plant that tree everywhere I could go. But that's not how it works, is it? It's too bad. It, well, you, you have wheat or some flour that grows up, and then you turn it in and you get sugar, and that's some seed, and you put it all together and roll it all up, and then it becomes something that looks like a seed. So, you can't really plant one. Well, you can, but it won't do anything. But... It'll make it sugar. You can plant chocolate, and it'll make it chocolate. Wouldn't that be cool? You can plant everything in a taco except the meat to make it a taco tree. Yeah. It didn't work anything? Yeah, okay. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But what Paul was trying to tell us in our reading is not so much about how you plant and grow a donut tree, but it's about how the attitude you have about what God has given now, we can give thanks for onions. We can give thanks for avocados. We can give thanks for peppers. We can give thanks for strawberries. We can even give thanks for onions. And even give thanks for donuts. Because it's not so much about what we do to get them, although that's very important. It's the attitude that we have of what God has given to us. So whether God has given you a donut or whether God has given you an onion or a tomato, ich, tomato, or whether God has given you an avocado or strawberry, what is most important is that God loves a cheerful giver. And God loves donuts. And God loves it when we share. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us all the blessings of life and make us grateful and happy and thankful for all that we have and all that we can share. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Thank you. The praise band would now like to um, sing for you a new song that we are introducing to the congregation called A Thousand Hallelujahs. <clears throat> One, two.
Our second scripture reading is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? When none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner, then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Well, it will come as no surprise to you that Thursday is Thanksgiving. If it does come as a surprise to you, you have a lot of shopping to do. I love Thanksgiving. I love the food. I love the fellowship. I even like the football. But especially I like the nap that comes in the afternoon. That's my favorite part of the whole day. But the question comes to us, as it does in all times and places, what are we thankful for today? I have a lot of memories of Thanksgivings of the past, and I look forward to the ones coming up. But more than all those things, we think that the meaning of the holiday is simple and is this, give thanks. I gave a talk at the Women's Fellowship on Thanksgiving around the world. We talked a lot about harvest festivals as they exist around the world. And Harvest festivals are very common in the Hebrew culture. <clears throat> there are festivals around it where booths are decorated and celebration of the harvest is celebrated. In almost every culture, some kind of thanksgiving at the harvest is celebrated, a time to give thanks to the God of the culture for the bountiful gifts that we have. It was in the UK and in Holland that the influence of what we know as Thanksgiving began. As the pilgrims celebrated harvest festivals in the United Kingdom and then saw them again in Holland when they, were, when they left to go to Holland before coming to America, they learned about festivals that are not only celebrating the harvest but giving thanks to God for the blessing of the harvest and sharing the harvest with other people and celebrating what this harvest means. The story that we know about Thanksgiving actually is two stories. There was one that takes place in 1619 in Jamestown, and the other one takes place in Pilgrim, Massachusetts, or in Plymouth, Massachusetts, in 1620, around the Mayflower. Now, for a long time, I was not aware of this being from Ohio, but for a long time, there was controversy in those states between who was the original and who was the real. Thanksgiving, and who had the real claim to it? I didn't know, but apparently it was a big enough deal for the President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, to issue a decree that they were, it was okay to celebrate both of them in good politician form. Around the world, Thanksgiving is celebrated. All the all the countries that the U.S. invaded, I mean, that they uh, went to to help the people out, now celebrate a kind of Thanksgiving. Some of them on different days, some of them in October, some of them in November, some of them the first of November, some of them the last of November. But all over the world, even in Canada, they have a Thanksgiving, although it's not really linked to the pilgrims as much. I remember my past Thanksgiving. I remember as a child going and sitting at the children's table. Do you ever have do that when you were younger? 
There was much more fun at the kids' table than there was at the grown-up table. I remember that time when I got to make the step to the big table. And I wanted to immediately go back to the kids' table because it was more fun. But I remember all the food and all the smells and how warm it was in there, not only from the food, but from all the bodies and from all the warmth and of all the love and being there with family and friends and people that we didn't even know that were friends of friends of family. Those were good memories. Think back on Thanksgivings that we had in England with Andrew and his friends. Now, they don't celebrate Thanksgiving because they were glad to get rid of the pilgrims, so they weren't really celebrating. Maybe they should celebrate the fact that they got rid of the pilgrims and sent them to America. But we would bring them over and we would try to explain to them why you have a pie made out of a squash. They didn't understand. They didn't particularly like it. But then they have weird tastes in England as well. They don't like things that we like. They like chocolate with orange, which I've come to like. It's very good, actually. But it was interesting explaining the whole holiday and what it meant and why we were doing it and the chance and the opportunity to celebrate and have these kind of weird food, including cranberries out of a can. Explain what it means to give thanks. Paul tells us that God gives us what we need. That the Lord provides for us all that we need. The seeds that produce food, like avocados, and the seeds that are food, like potatoes and onions. Whatever it is, the Lord provides. One of the fun things I like about Halloween is when you carve out the pumpkin, you get to eat the pumpkin seeds. Now, you could plant the pumpkin seeds, but what's the fun in that? A little salt on the pumpkin seeds, and it's good to go. But it's the sun and the rain that comes. It provides just the amount, the right amount, at just the right amount of time to bring the produce that we need. The sun and rain together in perfect harmony bring about the growth that we need. And there are those who harvest the crops. Different times, different skills for different kinds of crops. Some harvest for themselves and some are forced to harvest for others. One of the wonderful things I learned about in England was something called fair trade. Do you know what fair trade is? It gives a chance for people to, to buy coffee from people that are locally sourced instead of giving just to great big corporations. We give thanks for what God has given us of the people in our lives, the people that help us even when we don't want them to, like our parents. People that tell us we need to go to bed early because when we wake up in the morning, we're going to be tired when we go to school, but we don't believe them. In fact, some of us get to be older and we don't believe that to be true. Parents telling us that we need to do this and that. And I remember holding Andrew's hand, crossing a street, and him pulling away from me. And I'm wanting to communicate with him that the reason I'm holding his hand and preventing him from having freedom is so he doesn't get hit and hurt. Sometimes our parents make us do things that we don't like. But then there are other people who help us to grow and bloom. We thank thee then, O Father, for all things bright and good, the seed time, the harvest, our life, our health, our food. No gifts have we to offer, but all thy love in part, except which thou desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. We are thankful. We give thanks at the holiday. We reflect on what we have, and we anticipate a blessed future, and we can thank God for the blessings and realize that it's more than just a ritual we do when we sit down for a meal but we can give thanks to God and know that what we have, we provide and can give to others.
It's not so much about how much food we can stuff on a plate on Thanksgiving as it is to how much we can give to those in need in the future. God gives us the raw ingredients and we turn them into things like donuts or bread or wine. And we sing songs of thanksgiving. We plow the fields and scattered but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. But do we say thank you? We know it all comes from God, but do we say thank you? The lepers cry out, heal us. <coughs> they were desperate. They believed that Jesus could heal them. <coughs> Excuse me. They were desperate. And Jesus heals them miraculously. An unexpected an unbelievable, an amazing gift. I believe that all of them are thankful. I believe that all of them were thankful for the gift. They all went home to their families. They all went home to be in their society again. They all went home to do all the things they're supposed to do. <clears throat> and I believe that they were grateful. But only one came back. And it's important to hear the reading that Eli read for us. But Eli, you didn't put the sneer in when you said Samaritan. There's only one come back and him a Samaritan. He's a foreigner. The least person you would expect to give thanks for what God has done. And here he is, giving thanks to God. We need to be thankful and grateful to God. And you know, we forget that when it's us that goes to the store and buys the food, right? We go buy the turkey. We go buy the stuffing. We go buy everything. We even, we even make all the stuffing. We forget to give thanks to God. We forget to give thanks to those who labor and raise the turkeys and even give thanks to the turkey for giving its life for us. To give thanks for those who work the fields. To give thanks to those who bring the things together. For the truckers who bring it to our store. For the people working in the store that stock the shelves. For the people who make the Thanksgiving meal when we show up and eat. But before it all, and above it all, and behind it all, and around it all, is thanks to God. So let's not forgive to say thank you. Let's not forget to say thank you. Let's remember to say thank you. Let's remember to say, Lord, we thank you for this. And not in some perfunctory formal way, some way of ritualistic way of this is what we're supposed to do. But because we feel it. In our society, we are so far distant from how things grow. We don't rely upon the crops as much because we can always go to the store and buy something else. We've never had to make the decision between whether we're going to eat the rice to live today or plant the rice to live tomorrow. We don't have to make those choices, but there are some in the world who do. All we have to do is be grateful for what we have. And grateful is more than just, oh, thank you, God, for what you've done for me but it's thank you, God, for what I now can do for those who have less than me. So as we gather around tables this Thanksgiving season, let us remember to give thanks to God, not only on Thursday, but on Friday and on Sunday and on Monday as we remember those whose lives 
have been upturned because of the hatred toward people who are transgender. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, all into Advent, all into Christmas, all into the new year and forevermore, not only in a way that just is an expression of our faith, but in a way that is a blessing from our spirits. So let's the whole week, the whole year, all of our lives give us reasons to praise God. We thank you, Father, for all things bright and good, for all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord, oh, thank the Lord for all God's love. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of life that you have given us, and we give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We sing now, we thank, now thank we all our God, number 715. Please stand as you are able. Hello. I get to a Dutch, a uh, make it to where it's taller. I feel like, whew, what a big day for me. I'm Shauna, I'm an elder here, and I apologize for the uh, bit of a pause. I forgot to check for prayer cards during the song like I usually do, so I had to make a little loop to get up here. Um, and I didn't find any prayer cards, so if you have some and I somehow miss them, um, please make sure that we get it into the newsletter. 
Um, I did not get notice of any comments online, but please know any comments that are made later, we'll see them and we will add them to our prayers. Um, before I do the prayer, though, I just want to point out that there's a Thanksgiving offering um, going on right now. Um, there's your envelope is in your um, bulletin, and for those online, you don't have one, which is why I'm mentioning it. Um, the Thanksgiving offering helps with uh, uh, ministry uh, education opportunities. We've had um, multiple seminarians come out of this congregation, um, and we want to encourage that um, going forward. And the money given in the Thanksgiving offering uh, helps goes to those as institutions of learning. It helps with scholarships and stuff like that. So just wanted to make sure that got mentioned um, because it's kind of important. <laughs> so uh, we will uh, let us now pray. Sorry. Dear God, you comfort the brokenhearted. You remember those who feel forgotten. You have plans and work for people others have disregarded. You see what others don't, and you restore and you redeem your children whom you love, and we are all your children. For all this and more, we praise you and we thank you. Some of us feel broken today, Lord. We feel weary and lost. We know that you are our only way forward. Some of us are grieving. Some of us are joyful. Some of us are full of hope, and some of us know you are our only hope. Guide us, Lord, into your plans for us as individuals and as a church. Help us find the path you have left for us. We bring before you now, the things that are in our hearts, knowing that the answers to these questions and worries can only ever be found in you, and we remind ourselves that we trust you in all your wisdom, even when our lives confound us. We pray for those who are joyously gathering with family and friends this week, for those who are traveling, for those who are separated from family and friends this week or have empty chairs at their holiday celebrations, those for whom Thanksgiving is a painful holiday because of colonial history that weighs heavily on their lives and family histories. We pray for those that we're holding in remembrance on Monday and for those who feel unsafe and may not be with us next year. We pray for my husband's aunt who had uh, more radiation added to her treatment plan after more cancer was found in the midst of her treatment. We're thankful her husband seems recovered from the sepsis he was fighting, but we continue um, to pray for them both. I just learned that my cousin Shannon, um, my cousin who lost her mom and dad and her son last year to cancer, uh, her husband is fighting some unknown illness. Um, he's lost like 50 pounds in the last three months unexpectedly. Um, and so he's going through a lot of tests. Um, so we praise you that so far, most of the tests are, all the tests have come back negative, but we hope that he can be restored to health soon uh, when the source of his sickness is found. We also take a few moments to pray silently for the things we don't have words we can say aloud the things we're tired of praying about or scared to pray about or don't have permission to say aloud but still deeply care about, we bring that all to you right now, Lord. We also pray in the manner that your son taught us to pray together. Our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our communion hymn today is, Come Ye Thankful People, Rise, and ironically, you do not need to rise. Uh, it's number 718 in the blue hymnal. Give us this day our daily bread, not our daily cake, not even our daily donuts. Give us this day our daily bread. Wouldn't that be it'd be an interesting line in the in the song? In the, we're not going to have donuts for communion, although you can if you're home and you're watching and you, that's what you have. Because it's not about what kind of bread you use. It's about remembering that God provides it. It's about giving thanks to God for what has occurred that we remember at this time. We give thanks to God and remember that God provided for us a way out of sin and death. That God provided us a way in life and joy. That God provided us a way to share the bounties and the blessing of our abundant life with everyone we meet. So come, thankful people, come and share the feast that God has prepared for you. So we remembered that on the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And at the conclusion of supper, he took a cup and again, he gave thanks and he said, take all of you and drink from this. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, remembering me. Let us pray. We thank you for this table in which we are all welcome exactly as we are, God. Thank you for loving us and holding this space for us. We thank you for the symbol of the bread and the cup, the dual images of both sacrifice and generosity. We thank you for this chance to connect with you and with each other. We thank you for loving us and providing for us and allowing us to be your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Before we sing our final hymn, please take note of the announcements that are printed on your insert as well as in your bulletin. There is a general board meeting after worship. We invite you to come and stay for that. There is also the baptism inquiry class as well. And Thursday begins our Advent study at, it's actually at 1130 rather than 11 o'clock. Um, so please, if you're able to come to that, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be looking at the prophecies leading up to the birth of Jesus. So we like to invite, yes? Not this I meant next Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that we'll, we'll say November the 30th, we'll say. We're going to start then. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm not, probably not going to be here either. So, um, Okay, so um, if you would like to uh, be a part of the fellowship of this church by transfer of membership uh, in preparation for baptism or to rededicate your life to Christ, we invite you to come forward as we sing our final hymn, Forever. I've been told it won't go on forever, that it's, it's not the song that never ends, <laughs> but it will be praise to God forever. So let's stand and sing. One, two, three. <laughs> love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of Jesus Christ with everyone we meet. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.